the start of a new year and you may be looking for a new team, a team, any team to get your overseas basketball career started. But if you don't know when, where, and why overseas basketball teams are looking for players, then it's going to be tough sailing. So I'm going to show you exactly how to figure all those things out and more in this new guide. Let's get started. Now, when discussing how overseas basketball teams recruit or look for players, you have to understand something. A lot of these teams actually don't want their job postings, don't want their opportunities on their team to be public to everyone, to every player out there. And there's a simple reason for this. If they were to publicize their job openings to everyone out there, then they would just get bombarded by emails, by messages, by highlight films, by social media messages, by every way imaginable of players giving them all types of their tapes, their information, everything. And it would just be completely overwhelming that they couldn't even be able to handle it or look through any of it. So these teams, a lot of these teams will actually go through specific channels, whether that be through a trusted agent, whether that be through a trusted player, or a proven player who recommends someone, whether that be through exposure combines, all of these different channels and avenues is what a lot of these teams, basically all of these teams will use in order to recruit and get a player. So if you don't have one of these specific channels, one of these avenues, then it's going to be somewhat difficult to you and the odds will be against you. But there are a lot of ways that you can actually transform and sway the favors in your factor. And that's going to come down to two main things. First is going to be the season schedules, understanding how they work, when they're looking for players and why. And the second one will be the sign in period in every overseas basketball season. Now, if you can understand these two points, then you will be way far ahead of the competition because you will know essentially when they're looking for certain type of players, why they're getting rid of certain type of players, why they would maybe be looking for another player. And you can tailor your search specifically for their needs. Now, when thinking of season schedules, essentially what you need to know are the start and end dates. That's pretty self-explanatory. You need to know when the season actually runs and when it ends so that you can tailor your message to the team at the right time. But more important than that, you have to understand what league you're actually looking at. Is it a high level league? Is it a low level league? Is it a shorter season where it's only two to three months and they may not be changing their imports as much? Is it a longer season like in Europe where it's seven to eight months and they may switch out the imports at Christmas time just because a lot of them get fatigued halfway through or they get injured. There's more chance of injury with the longer season, etc. So for that, I actually did a thorough blog post and a video on it on all the season schedules, all of the noticeable leagues and significant leagues throughout the world. So check that out. I'll link it in the description below. So if you need to know more about the start and end dates, I would highly, highly recommend checking those out. Otherwise, you're always going to be applying for jobs, looking at jobs in an irrelevant time frame. And if you're doing that, then you're not even giving your chance a fight and shot at the job that you're looking for in the first place. So you have to know when the seasons start and end. Then you can look at the sign in periods in each specific season. Now in overseas basketball, I break it down to pretty much four sign in periods. There is the off season, there is the preseason, there is the in season sign ins, and there is the playoffs or postseason sign ins. Now, based on what type of player you are, what level you are, whether you're an experienced pro, whether you're a low level pro, whether you're a rookie and you don't, you're looking for your first shot, you should be looking at specific leagues and in certain sign in periods so that you give yourself the best chances possible of getting on for a contract. Now, it goes without saying that the offseason and the preseason will be the two most active sign in periods in overseas basketball. And this doesn't vary much from when you were playing in university or college, to be quite honest, because obviously if you have your players in line, if you have everything in order prior to the season beginning, your chances of success are going to be greater than otherwise. So just think about it. If they get all their players in line, then they can do stuff like they can finalize the contract details. They can finalize the living arrangements. They can understand what play style they want to play. They can understand what coach they want to bring in and the players that he may want. So all of this comes into play in making the offseason and the preseason the two most active periods in overseas basketball. 
obviously teams are going to go with the channels with the people who they're most familiar with, as I mentioned earlier, whether that be through an agent, whether that be through an exposure camp director who they trust, whether that be through a proven player who has recommendations of players he wants to bring in. These teams will always look to these channels, to these avenues first. But that isn't to say that unproven and rookie players can't get their start in the offseason or the preseason. Obviously, that's not the case. Otherwise, we would have no rookies in overseas basketball. This is where the rookies get most of their starts, in fact, because a lot of these lower leagues in the mid levels or the low levels, the purpose of these leagues actually isn't to stay in the league. It's looked at more like a springboard league where you get an opportunity there and then you go elsewhere. So that means that players are always in these lower leagues are almost always, always, always locked into a single season contract. Whether that season is two months, three months, whether that season is seven months or eight months in Europe, it depends. But they're going to be locked into a single season contract. So that means there's plenty of player movement in many of these leagues so that makes the off season and the preseason regardless of your talent level regardless of where you are what type of player you are proven unproven low level rookie this will be the most opportune time to get sign-ins in overseas basketball now while the vast majority of teams as i mentioned will sign players during the off season and the preseason some teams will purposely wait until the season has actually started until they sign players now this can be for a few reasons but two of the main reasons is finance and performance now for finance when we're thinking of this think of lower level teams lower level leagues uh, where they will actually wait until the season starts because they can actually reduce the cost of the import or of the foreigner until they sign them in the season. They can reduce the cost like your food, your transportation, your housing, uh, all of these different things that will add up over time. And they can still get a good player, they can still be competitive, and they'll still cut cost. And it's gonna be even better for them if you're already in the country. So in Europe, there's a lot of these exposure camps that happen. A lot of these teams in Europe, in these lower level leagues, will purposely wait until the season has started and then they'll go to these exposure camps or these academies and they'll search for players and sign them that way because they know that they can cut the cost in a lot of these players. But another reason that a in-season sign-in may happen is because of performance. Maybe a player didn't uh, come into shape, didn't uh, didn't come as they described them. Maybe they said they were 6'7 and they, then they're only 6'4, right? Maybe they lied on the resume or something like that. Or maybe they're just not playing well enough. They could get in Injured, there could be behavior issues. Uh, there could be a whole bunch of reasons why they would cut a player in the middle of the season. But this happens all the time in every country, in every league, wherever you are. This is so commonplace. So that's why it's so important that you're on top of these leagues and you understand when the leagues actually start and when they're running. Because then you'll know that a lot of these teams are going to be switching out players. And if you're actually in the country or if you're in the area and you somehow arrange it um, that that you're nearby in the same time frame that's going to only incentivize teams more again depending on what level you're at to sign you because then they can again cut the cost of certain things now the final signing period in overseas basketball would be in the playoffs and this is a really really interesting signing period because for the most part this is going to be tailored towards more experienced players more proven players while making inexperienced players more vulnerable during this time so for instance this happens all the time where players will get a cheaper player during the regular season they'll they'll maybe grab them for uh, let's say a thousand dollars and there's an experienced player who they actually wanted all along who maybe he wanted four thousand dollars but they couldn't afford those four thousand dollars over the seven months of the season or however long the season is so instead what they'll do is they'll maintain contact with that experienced player they'll bring in the the inexperienced player who only wants a thousand dollars and they'll have them throughout the year and then they'll cut them right at the playoffs they'll cut him and bring in the experienced player who they actually wanted all along and they'll bring him in because they think that he's actually the one who's going to get them over the hump and into the championship and win the title. 
This happens all the time. I did an example of this actually in the blog post, but this is something that inexperienced players have to be aware of. You know, don't take this time frame uh, personal if you get cut. I've seen this to so many players where they just get cut at the last second. This is just part of the game. To be honest, if you're an experienced player, the chances are that you're not even watching this because you're already out there doing it and you know how it works already. But I'm just saying this to all my younger brothers, all my younger rookies in the game who don't know that this is a possibility because you may think that, oh, if I'm killing it for the past five or six months, that I'm going to be you know, I'm going to be here, obviously, for the most important time of the year, which is the playoffs. And that's just not the case sometimes, no matter how well you play. So there you have it. Now you know how overseas basketball teams look for players and how you could essentially find them in theory moving forward in 2021. Now, obviously, this video isn't long enough to cover important topics like how do we actually get in good with the people who are connected to these teams, such as agents, coaches, managers, proven players. How do we contact these teams, exposure camps, which ones are the best ones to attend? You know, these are all topics that I would love to cover in the future. So if you guys found this uh, insightful and helpful to your career, please give it a like, uh, comment and subscribe. I've had a few people reach out to me on social media already. And I love that because, you know, I'm really going back and forth with these guys trying to help them in a constructive dialogue for their careers. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always there. I just want to provide you guys with the content and the things that I didn't know growing up when I was coming in the game in my early 20s. I didn't know any of these things. So, you know, if I can help you guys out, that's my goal. So until then, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. Until next time. Peace.